What's going on, everyone? Hold on one second. We're having technical difficulties. Let's try it again. talking now we can start baby what is going on sorry for that technical difficulties it happens what's going on what's cracking it's your boy fat samurai guy that's right welcome back to another episode of the movie dojo where we discuss martial arts cinema and action films baby who is in the house who we got in the house today we're doing a trifecta today guys we're doing a uh, I'm doing three little mini, mini movie dojo reviews. Not going to go into too much detail unless the second movie starts to annoy me as I talk about it. <laughs> and then I might say, fuck it, I'm going spoilers. So we'll see. I'll give you guys a heads up. But let me see all the badasses, all the samurai assassins that come forth. That's right. With blades ready, nunchakus on the side. That's right. Ninja stars. Who's here? Who we got here today? Movie dojo army. We got Jake Hall. What's going up? What's going up? And what's going up? What's going on, brother? Heather, what's going on? Lone Wolf in the house. Oh, shit. Psych in the house. Tyler, Flick Snacks and Nick Knicks. His, his YouTube channel is on fire right now. It's on fire. Psst. See that? Ow. Ow, goddammit. That's some Flick Snacks, Nick Knacks YouTube channel. What's going on? Who else we got here? Lone Wolf Ronan and Heather. What's going on, everybody? chiming in hang out with the samurai guy and we're gonna go over go over three little movie and many movie reviews that's right we got three tonight so i decided it's like ah instead of doing three separate videos <laughs> i was like you know what let me hang out with the movie dojo army tonight live we'll chit chat a little bit and uh i could just talk about all three movies so up first we're gonna start with something recent up first, let's go ahead and get into it. Adrian Brody's Clean. Oh. Feeling that music, feeling that music, baby. Oh, that's right. Here we go. Let's get into it. Clean. That's right. Directed by Paul Solette. Starting our boy, Adrian Brody, Glenn Flesh Fleshner, Fleshler, excuse me, Richie Merritt. Directed by Paul Solette, as I mentioned earlier before. And uh, let's go ahead and get to the plot synopsis here. Tormented by his past, a garbage man named Clean attempts to a quiet life of redemption, but soon finds himself forced to re reconcile with the violence of his past. There we go. So I remember I saw the trailer for, for this, and I was just like, yo, you know, this is right up Samurai Guy's Alley. Is this a vigilante time movie? Like, what kind of movie is this? And uh, I was just like, you know, Samurai Guys, I'm still patient. I'm still patient when I, wa when I watch films. And and luckily, me being patient uh, for this movie rewarded me. Now, now, I'm gonna I'm gonna come out and say this: if you're expecting a nonstop action thrill ride with Clean, you're probably gonna be disappointed. You're probably gonna be let down. The trailer uh, obviously is it's a lot more action packed than the movie itself because, believe it or not, uh, the movie is is more of a character uh, story more of a character driven that's right story uh and character study that's what i really really wanted to say and it's 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 a fascinating story and it's, a, it's a kind of a slow burn i mean really the action doesn't really happen until you know probably the third half of the movie then things start picking up but it's very slow slow paced so slow slow burn movie 
But interesting enough to it kept Samurai Guy's attention. Another thing that was interesting about this movie is that Adrian Brody composed the soundtrack. I was like, wow, look at this guy, man, man of many talents. Uh, his performance in the film was uh, very well done. But what was what was interesting about the film was it it it, it kind of the, the main topic that was brought up was really the theme, if you will, is dealing with addiction. And so uh, you would have these scenes where Brody, with his character clean, would go to these meetings, you know, and and he would sit around there. And everybody, you know, talks about their inner demons and stuff like that because they're dealing with their own type of addictions, whether it's drugs or alcohol or whatnot. But what's interesting with him and the, and the whole theme of the movie with it, dealing with addiction and, 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 and substance abuse was, was interesting with his character is his addiction used to be violence. And the movie goes out of its way to even his character says that cocaine, all that shit, drugs, meth, he's like, fuck that. He's like, <laughs> violence is like way more of a high for him. Like those drugs don't even compare. And uh, well, of course, without spoiling anything, uh, not going into, into too too much detail, uh, he did have, uh, there wasn't just violence. He did have an addiction with drugs, which ends up backfiring and uh, takes out one of his, uh, one of his family members, if you will. I'm, I'm trying not to spoil too much. <laughs> but, uh, and then that kind of, takes him off the path of violence. And he just is like, you know, fuck this. I'm not going to do what I used to do and what I was really good at doing. I'm going to not do that anymore. I'm just going to be a bin man, you know, and uh, make an honest living. Uh, except he, he takes kind of a liking to um, a girl, a young girl that lives in the same area he does because she reminds him of his daughter. And he gets her a bike and he, you know, takes her to school and kind of, you know, fixes her something to eat and, you know, kind of looks out for her. And unfortunately, she gets tied up with uh, some people that are not, not too, not too shabby, you know, not, not, not kind of rough around the edges, not, not too good, kind of thuggish, ruggish, if you will. And that's what kind of, you know, it's, it's interesting because a lot of parts of this movie kind of feels like an art house film. Like there's a scene in the movie where, because <laughs> his character is known to use a uh, like a, a wrench tool, right? And there's a scene in the movie where it's almost like he's getting a calling back to where he used to be. And the way the scene flows and the pacing of it and how it's filmed, it's almost like it's like <laughs> King Arthur finding the sword and and taking it out of the stone. <laughs> It was almost like that, like the way it was kind of filmed in terms of Im imagery in here. Uh, but he kind of gets his calling back to who he used to be because he wants to uh, save this young girl. And a lot of cr a lot of crazy beatdowns happening. We get a little bit of a hatchet fighting. I don't know if there's another movie out there where a hatchet gang shows up in a bowling alley. Yeah, fuck it. They, they, who cares about the witnesses? Who, who cares in broad daylight? It's fucking the hatchet gang walking into bowling alley with hatchets. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> so you get a little, little bit of action here and there, a little bit of violence. Uh, but in saving uh, the, the young girl, he ends up, you know, these are minor spoilers. He ends up uh, uh, fucking up uh, the resident mob leader's son. And that's where things get crazy. And that's where we kind of have like a, uh, the hunt begins for him and the little girl. But uh, I'll say this. I'll say this. The last five to ten minutes. It's going to scratch the fucking itch, guys. The finale is fucking badass, violent. You will be pleased. But it just depends on you. Like It depends on if you're patient enough to even make it that far. In the movie, because like like I said, it's a very slow burn, character driven type of story, uh, with a character dealing with his past demons and trying to become a better person, uh, even even if it means going back to uh, his dark, violent uh, tendencies, having those come forth. You know what I mean? So, but if you if you guys can hang in there, if you have patience, the finale is very satisfying. It's very satisfying. 
uh, you will definitely enjoy it. Let me check on the guys' comments here. Let's see here. <laughs> Hatchet Gang reminds me of the Butcher Train Car and Snowpiercer. <laughs> well, it's not that badass, uh, Flix, but it's 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 solid. It's a solid little uh, throw down there. Yeah. There we go. I'm reading you guys' comments. Got the badasses in here hanging out with Samurai Guy. Uh, but yeah, yeah, overall, very solid. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, but again, if you're expecting a nonstop action thrill ride, you're probably going to be disappointed. However, let me go ahead and rate this some bitch. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I'm going to give clean a solid B, baby. That's right. Solid B for clean. Very entertaining. Uh, the finale was very satisfying and great performances abounds from Mr. Brody and the rest of the cast. Very entertaining, very solid, entertaining movie, if you have the patience for the buildup. So that's my little mini review of Clean. What's up, Mr. King Palmo? What's going on? What's cracking? All right. It's time for the next movie. <laughs> like I said, it depends on the, while I'm reviewing this. Let's see if uh, I might just say, fuck it. Let's just go to spoilers, man. <laughs> All right, here we go. Next up, we have the Commando. The trailer looked badass, didn't it? Look, 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 pretty fucking cool, didn't it? Yeah, you enjoyed that, didn't you? Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> Samurai guy was really disappointed with this one, man. And I'm tired. I'm tired of this shit, man. I'm tired of the shit because I love Michael Jai White. He is the fucking man. I met him in real life twice. He's so nice. He's badass. He is a legend in the martial arts movie community. But I'm tired of movies like this where they just don't let him cut loose to my satisfaction. <laughs> and it's kind of like, you know, why, think about this. Why do you think Michael Jai White fans or martial arts movie fans love Blood and Bone? Why do they love Blood and Bone? Just as an, ex as a, as an example, you got Undisputed 2. That's another one, right? But for, for an example, why do they love Blood and Bone? Because, well, it's a solid story. You get a solid villain and a solid character and good performance by Michael Jai White. But, but why do martial arts movie fans like that movie a lot? Because it's fucking badass. Because they showcase what's special about Michael Jai White. Kicking ass, taking names with some badass fight scenes and a great finale in fight. And it's just like, where's this Michael Jai White? These are the type of movies that has brought us to the dance and made us Michael Jai White fans. The movies like this and Undisputed 2. You know, even Black Dynamite, man, which is amazing. But it's like, there's so many. Now there's, now there's a lot of Michael Jai White movies I have not seen. But a lot of them that I do see on, you know, online for streaming or at the video store and all that, it's always him co-starring in, in other people's movies. So those movies might be awesome too. I can't. Like I say, I'm not going to lie and say I saw those, but there might be some badass shit he's done with other people co-starring. Um, but him as a solo star, he needed more movies like Blood and Bone. And The Commando is a perfect example of why I am so tired. <laughs> I'm so tired of these of these blue ball Michael Jai White movies. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so tired of it. He, the guy is so talented. It's insane how talented Michael Jai White is. And I, I didn't even bother watching Welcome to Sudden Death because I saw the trailer and that's all I needed to see. Plus, speaking with people in the industry, some stuntmen and, and martial artists, I've heard a lot of behind the scenes stuff where the post edit uh, uh, people who were involved with editing that movie fucked up the fight scene. So it's kind of like, well, I can't even go in and enjoy that. So I didn't even bother uh, watching welcome to sudden death. But when I saw the trailer, 
for the commando i was like okay it does look like it's similar to taken like that's, that's kind of how the trailer made it look right it's another taken type movie but i didn't mind that because the action from what you just seen from what i showed you looks kind of legit dude i want to see michael j white cut fucking loose like scott atkins do, does an avengement cut fucking loose you know i'm so tired of these blue balls michael j white movies man the guy is so talented so let's go ahead and get into it man you know what you know what fuck this this is spoilers now <laughs> Fuck this. All right, here we go. The Commando, directed by Asif Akbar. I'm not making that name up. Starring Mickey Rourke, Jeff Fahey, and, of course, the legend himself, the wasted legend himself, Michael Jai White. Plot synopsis. A DEA agent with PTSD returns home after a botched mission and must now protect his family from a home invasion after a recently freed convict and his henchmen come after their stash of millions inside of the agent's home. There you go. There you go. Very simplistic plot. But the movie starts out pretty pretty good. Pretty good. Um, the introduction to Michael J. White's character is really badass. Like, as soon as he shows up on screen, he just slits the dude's throat and it goes off on the mission. And I was just like, yo, oh, I think I I think I picked the perfect movie. Like, yes, this is what I want to see. I want to see my boy kick ass and take names. It was a great introduction. It was really, it was really cool. And uh, you know, the, him and his DEA team, they go in, uh, and they, they're trying to they're trying to get this trying to get this drug dealer alive. They're trying to catch him alive to get information. Of course, that goes wrong. You get the firefight. And Michael J. White's character ends up killing some innocents. And that really bothers, uh, really bothers, of course, that would bother anyone, right? But that's what causes his PTSD. So he goes, he, he leaves from being a DEA uh, agent. He stops doing that. And he does have, his character did have a military. They briefly mentioned that he did, did have a military background. Because I'm like, where's the fucking the commando come in? <laughs> He's a DEA agent, but... You have a line later saying, oh, yeah, military pass, served in the military. I'm like, okay, that's how they solved that problem. Uh, but, um, you know, he goes home to his family and he tries to adjust. And and the, the best part of this film, again, is, is Michael Jai White. Uh, even though he's not used the way I want him to be used, in terms of acting performance, very well done. Very good. Very well done. Like, his acting is the best part of this film. And after seeing all that action from the trailer that I showed you, <laughs> I know I know you're probably surprised that I'm, I'm kind of highlighting the acting of his performance more than the actual action, and there's a reason for that. But seriously, though, uh, his acting is very well done. Like, I, it's, it's the saving grace for uh, this film, for me, barely saving it, <laughs> barely. So, all right. So you have Mickey Rourke's character, you know, the house that Michael J. White's family lives in. Let me stop calling him Michael J. White. <laughs> Hold on. James Baker. There you go. The house that his family live in uh, before they moved in there, obviously, uh, Mickey Rourke, before he got sent to jail many years uh, earlier, stashed all this money. We're talking like about $3 million are stashed in there. So James Baker, there you go. And his friend Sebastian, kind of DEA agent buddy. And so uh, right off the bat, I'm, I'm interested at first. I'm kind of like, okay, we had a solid action opener. It was decent. Michael Joe White's acting performance was really good dealing with this PTSD something I wasn't expecting the movie to kind of go down. I'm like, okay. But his youngest daughter is atrocious. His youngest daughter, I just, oh my God. These these type of characters, you know, you want them to die. You want them to die. But she apparently uh, found the money that was in the house. So she's been going out, stealing the money and or taking it and buying her shit, but not telling her parents. Just being a stupid young teenager, man. It's annoying. And her 
her her her level of annoyance started here and then by the end of the movie it was like oh my god just die <laughs> like i want this character to die so bad but you know you're not gonna have that so anyway just to make a long story short mickey Rourke gets out he gets his crew together he has his three three members of his crew kind of mostly spy on the house throughout the whole movie so there's no action really at all until the very maybe last maybe the last 10 5 to 10 minutes but the difference between this and clean is I'm, i was interested and invested with the story of clean unfortunately with this movie I'm just kind of like, despite Michael Joy White's really great performance, everything else, all the other characters just really, really annoyed me. And what was, it was, what was weird was Mickey Rourke felt like, I felt like he was ad-libbing throughout the whole movie. Not that it didn't feel off or, it just was weird. Like it was just kind of like a lot of his dialogue felt like he was just ad-libbing. So anyway, just to make a long story short, the, the, the three henchmen, are getting ready to, to raid the house and get the money. They were just waiting from uh, James, that's right, James Baker, to basically uh, leave the house with his wife. They're, they're going on this like, kind of vacation to kind of get away and help him deal with his issues. Uh, and so that's where we have our taken moment. So they go in there. The youngest daughter is an idiot who has a party. You know, it doesn't care. She doesn't care that it's this, it's stolen money and the money can be tracked. She doesn't care. <laughs> so, 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 so basically, she got all of her friends killed. Uh, yeah, so she's one of those characters. And that's when we kind of have our little taken moment where the oldest daughter's trying to call James, her father, on the phone. And, oh, they're in the house. And she gets pulled underneath the bed. And then Michael Jai White turns around and the wife goes, why aren't we calling the police? And uh, Michael John White's character is like, because the police get hostages killed. This is what I was trained for. Kind of like Casey Ryback, right? This I'm trained for. Kind of had one of those dialogue and lines. Uh, but here's the thing. The action at the end just was not satisfying, man. Even when you have badass Michael John White saying Casey fucking Ryback lines, this I'm trained for. Civilian li civilian life is not for me, but but this I'm trained for. And then he, when he goes back to the house, he kills all the bad guys. Mickey Rourke's there at that point. And it's just the way he kills some of them. He kills them fine. Like, it's okay. He does little movements, kind of throws down a little bit. It's all right. But the other kills in the house are kind of short and sweet and very underwhelming and very anticlimactic. And I'm thinking like, yo, there's no action through this entire movie. There's nothing. That finale better scratch the itch, at least like Clean did. Like, let's go. Let's unleash the beast, right? He's the fucking the commando. Let's see him fuck people up. But it was very underwhelming. There was even the one, this one henchman who... He was like the wild card. He was like the crazy one. Where they, they were like, even his own henchmen buddies are like, calm the fuck down. He was like the crazy one, the wild one. His death was just so, you know, he had his gun on Michael or James, and James turns it on him, shoots him in the head, and that's it. It was just like, come on, man. Either they ran out of time or they ran out of budget. But it was so underwhelming. The only semi-decent thing at the end was he had a fight with Donald Cowboy Cerrone. And they went at it a little bit. That's the best fight in the whole movie. But it was brief. And I know Mickey Rourke is 300 years old. Okay, I know this. But he's still in shape. He still, he still looks great in this movie. But their fight, this is supposed to be the finale fight. You got Donald Cowboy Cerrone's the mini boss. Then you got to go up to, you know, Mr. X and fight some Mickey Rourke. And I'm like... Dude, the fight between him, and I know he's old. I know he can't, like, do crazy martial arts Scott Atkins shit, right? But he knows how to box, use Mickey Rourke's strengths, throwing some stunt doubles here and there. But his fight with Mickey Rourke was literally, like, five moves. Boom, 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 talk some shit, boom, kicks him through the door. That was it. It was so, so underwhelming, man. 
so under. <laughs> Hold on a second. We got to get those cowboys in it. Oh, at least YouTube the fight scene. Yeah, it's brief, but I mean, compared to everything else in the movie, it's just so, just so underwhelming, man. And I'm just like, I'm just, again, tired of these Michael Jai White blue ball movies. I'm so tired of it, man. Just really, really, really tired. Just waste, waste of time. Uh, again, shout out to all the stunt men and, and hard work that put in to what they had to do, what their jobs are. I will never shit on them. But the movie, it's just like, I just don't replace. <laughs> Hold on a second. Don't replace badass Michael Jai White with annoying daughters fucking up shit the whole movie just to bring his character back at the end because this is what he's trained for. And just, just easily killing people. Now, I wouldn't have minded him easily killing people if maybe if we had a better, bigger body count. Um, you know, it's just, oh, God. Or hold on a second. So what you're saying is Warwick Davis has better movies than Jai White right there. <laughs> I just, I, I don't get it. Like I said, a lot of those movies where he's co-starring with people, I heard that movie he made with Luke Goss is really good. Uh, like I haven't seen a lot of his other movies where he's co-starring, but when he's the solo guy, we got to let him shine, man. You know, and I know he's becoming more of a behind the scenes director and, or, or filmmaker because he's got his own company now. It was, I think it's gigantic studios or something like that. So I understand that. And, and, and if he wants to retire and be a behind the scenes guy, Hey, more power to him. We're still fans of him. You know, but but these movies where he's the star, we got to let him cut loose, guys. We got to let him cut loose. We got to do it. So, all right, let me wrap this shit up. There was a lot more I wanted to rant about, but I'm I'm I'm, I'm so annoyed that I want to get to it. <laughs> I'm telling you, Michael J. White's acting performance is the only saving grace. And this barely makes it to this rating I'm about to give it. This barely makes it. So I'm giving the commando a C. Yeah, it barely, barely makes it to average. Barely makes it to average. I know you guys were expecting worse, but it, it's it's a C. It's a C. But it's just, I'm tired of C's. I'm tired of Michael J. White C movies. You know what I'm saying? The guy is a legend for reason. You know, so. Ugh. All right, Flicks, have a good one, brother. All right, last movie of the day. This is fun. <laughs> Something I haven't watched in a long time. In a long, long, long time. To the point where I kind of forgotten it because it's been so long. So re-watching it recently on DVD. I know. I know. It's sad. This movie doesn't even have a fucking Blu-ray release. Um, watching it again on DVD. It was a grand old time. Let's get into it, guys. Excessive force, baby. <laughs> yeah oh yeah oh yeah that's right my boy terry silver has returned <laughs> did you guys know did you guys know he was a cop that's right he was a cop before he uh, opened up his dojo and, and karate kid <laughs> what's really funny about this is thomas ian griffin uh he wrote this story but what's funny is uh <laughs> his name is terry in this movie <laughs> but 1993 after the horror, after the, the very disappointing, the commando, Samurai Guy had to go back to 1993 to get his action fix. Okay. What does that what does that tell you? Okay. What does that tell you, man? Jesus. So, man, like the music, 
the direction, everything about this was badass nineties, man. I was get, I was like, man, this is reminding me of like rapid fire with Brandon Lee. Like I was really having so much fun enjoying this. I mean, hold on before I get into it really quick. Let's, uh, like I'm already smiling and, and I'm giddy. I'm giddy. Really quick. Plot synopsis. <clears throat> Uh, Chicago PD detective Terry McCain is merciless, mercilessly, I can speak of the English, mercilessly efficient against serious criminals, therefore hated. After a major coup, his personal loved ones are targeted. A rookie partner is bomb murdered. Realizing there must be an accomplice within the force, he goes undercover. Slowly, it becomes clear He's up against a monster conspiracy with branches and all power houses. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go back to this so I can check out the cast again and read for you because this cast is a great cast in this, man. This is directed by John Hess. And, of course, you got Thomas Ian Griffin, the legend, is there. James Earl Jones, son. Lance Henriksen, son. Tony Todd, what? Burt Young, Polly, Polly's up in here. Yeah, what y'all know about Polly? Yeah, great cast in this, phenomenal cast. And man, did I have a blast <laughs> revisiting uh, Excess Force, man. The beginning, the beginning action sequence. We got, we got, we got our cops. We got, we got Thomas Ian Griffin's character. Terry, right? You got Tony Todd, who's his partner, and his other buddy, who's his other partner. They go in to, to get the setup going. We had a little drug dealing going down, a little bit of some, some. I think it's three million. What's up with this three million popping up in movies? <laughs> Is that a secret number or something? Three million was gonna get you know, dis distributed for for the for the for the for the drugums, and of course, obviously, doesn't go well, and the money winds up missing, and so. After the action shootout and the craziness, that's when Tony Todd is targeted and uh, they really fuck up uh, his uh, Thomas Ian Griffin's other partner. They fuck him up. Uh, but the opening action sequence, you get martial arts, two gun pistol guns a blazing style, right? We get all of this shit. And then in the, in the end of the action sequence, the beginning action sequence, <laughs> you have... Terry running across the top of the bar, chasing the guy, jumps off the top of the bar, jump kicks him on the way down, just kicking the shit out of the dude, casting him through glass, through the fucking window. This is the opening action sequence. Yeah. Yeah. This is making me want to change my rating of the commando right now. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I might. Am I gonna? Am I gonna keep the commando a C? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Right now, I'm. I'm tempted to lower this shit. All right. So anyway, just '90s nostalgia. The music, the score, the action, and there's a lot of action in this. And Lance Henriksen is is, is playing his devilish self. And uh, and one thing that really surprised me was, of course, Thomas Ian Griffin is great. I mean, he's doing all his, doing all his, you know, action scenes and stunts, and um, you know, he has his own charisma. You know, he was great in the movie, of course. But but um, I was not expecting motherfucking Candyman, son, Tony Todd, to be doing martial arts, doing kickboxing. I was like, does he train? Like, <laughs> like I, I'm honest. I, I don't know. It was an honest question. Yeah, I was not expecting to see Candyman kickbox and do martial arts. <laughs> but in terms of acting performances, Tony Todd was really good in this movie. He was really, really good in terms of acting performance. Uh, but yeah, man. I mean, people get stabbed. Someone gets stabbed with a giant pitchfork. You know, you got you got Terry hanging, you know, jumping up to the car grabbing the top of the railing so the car won't run him over, and then he hangs like motherfucking Batman shooting a pistol. I'm like, dude, this is fucking phenomenal. This is phenomenal. Like, seriously. This movie needs to come out on Blu-ray. Come on, MVD Rewind. Fucking Vinegar Syndrome and shit. 
Kino Lorber, come on, release <laughs> excessive force on Blu-ray. I'll even take a bare bones Blu-ray. But yeah, jump kicking motherfuckers off the building. They fall down through glass. Like this was a very just classic 90s action entertainment, man. And it's just like, I'm, I'm hovering. I'm hovering on my the commando roof. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's kind of a, a kind of a who done it, who's trying to kill him, kind of a mystery. And he's trying to solve the mystery because he's he was framed, you know, his uh, Terry Terry, his character was framed in the movie. So he's trying to clear his name. Uh meanwhile, uh just Great action and just very, uh, just a lot of entertainment stuff I miss and crave and I'm nostalgic for. And it was so, it was like a breath of fresh air. I, I kid you not. I watched Clean first and I, I was pleased. Clean was very solid. Then went, to, then went to the commando and then right after that went in right into ex- excessive force. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, thank God. <laughs> Thank God there's a God. Yeah. A God of action looking down upon us. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Like just, just, just kicking martial arts. Oh, and, and you get little, little great scenes in the movie too. So you have Bert, like this is one of my favorites. Bert Young. He's like the, I know it's funny, right? Paulie's like the straight up gangster mob guy in the movie. And uh, he, you know, of course, Terry's, the character of Terry thinks Burt Young uh, blew up, you know, Tony Todd, basically. <laughs> so uh, he goes looking for him. And you get a really great scene where he goes into the restaurant where Burt Young's hanging out, kicks the shit of all his henchmen, and then straight bitch slaps, just pimp slaps <laughs> Burt Young several times and just makes him pee his pants. Like, if the scene... Not, I mean, he, he was basically scared shitless, but this, that whole scene and Thomas Ian Griffin's performance in that scene was great. So you get little touches like that. It's not just mindless action. You get you get extra bonuses, little nuggets like that. So, uh, yes, right. We're preaching it. We're preaching it tonight. <laughs> oh, he said Commando is not on that. <laughs> the Commando. The Commando. Oh God! But yeah, there's there's really not that much to say. These are just little nuggets, little mini reviews tonight. Uh, but yeah, I highly recommend uh, Excessive Force. And uh, let's see here. Hold on. Let me go back here. All right. Let me. This is going to wrap it up. I'm gonna go ahead and rate this some bitch. I'm giving Excessive Force. An A minus, baby. A minus. Now I know a lot of people are probably like Samurai Guy, that rating's way too high, but I can't help it. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> this is A minus all the way. Recent action movie, a C. <laughs> Fucking bullshit. Average wasting our time. C recent movie. And then we have movies where, hey. That was that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too shabby. I enjoyed that. But we had to go all the way back to motherfucking 1993 to get a goddamn A. <laughs> oh man! But yeah, I love it. I love it, man. I really, really, really enjoyed that for sure. Let me go back to the comments. Let me catch up to you guys here. There we go. Numba says good score. There we go. Hey, what's up, John? How you doing, man? That's right. Thumbs up from uh, Possum here. Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to, I've calmed down a little bit. I got my rant out. I'm going to leave, I'll leave the commando as a, at, a, at a C. It'll stay, stay there. It's fine. <laughs> oh, man. But this was a blast. This was a blast hanging out with you guys. And uh, let's, oh, we got Lone Wolf saying, good rank samurai. Glad you took us to church of badassity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Love hanging out with you guys. Oh, Dark Gable agrees with my ratings. Well, thank you, Dark Gable. Yeah. Hey, let me know, guys, if you enjoy uh, the Movie Dojo 
type reviews live with you guys. Let me know if you guys prefer it that way or how I usually do them. Let me know. Because it might be, I mean, I can mix it up, but it might be uh, more fun to do it like this with you guys so I can see what you guys thought of the movies and we could, I can, you know, post your ratings too. And we could do multiple movies, you know? I could do like five movies. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Instead of one movie review uploaded to the channel every single time, I say we do this, man, and let's just knock out several. And we could even do that with horror films, too. A Dark Gable Loves Both. There we go. If it's something big and major, I'll probably keep it the traditional review, right? I'll do that. But uh, once in a while, hey, let's do live, man. Let's do it together. That way I can hear feedback from you guys, see what you guys thought of the movies, too. Yeah, even if you hated the movies I like, it's still cool to hear you guys' take on it. <laughs> Oh, DJ says live is better, me thinks. More interactive. There we go. Lone Wolf says, I like it live. It's more personal, but overall, I do love both. Yeah, I mean, I'll still do, uh, like I said, it depends on the movie, right? Like if it's a big movie coming out this year, it's action movie, I'll probably do it the regular way. But, uh, but yeah, let's do some more lives like this, hanging out with you badasses. And let's do multiple little mini reviews. I think there's fun. That way we can talk about more movies at the same time. That's sad, man. That's really sad. I had to pop in a DVD. <laughs> what? What is that? What's a DVD? I had to pop in a DVD. That's right. Luckily, luckily the DVD was actually uh, anamorphic widescreen. Because I got old DVDs that are not even anamorphic. <laughs> And they're like sh sunk in the middle of the screen like that. Uh, to get some action entertainment, man. I swear. There's a lot of... Think about this, guys. There's a lot of action movies from the 90s and the 80s that just went straight to VHS. And that's it. Some of them didn't even... We're probably lucky, except, except excuse me, Excessive Force even came out on DVD. Um, but... Just imagine, there's like, uh, you know, when I had my video recently, my interview with David, David, uh, excuse me, Worth, it was really awesome uh, chatting with David Worth, that badass, that legend, but True Vengeance, I don't know if True Vengeance with uh, Daniel Bernhardt, which is another badass movie, and David Worth blew my mind, if you guys didn't see the interview, he blew my mind, and he said why the action was so good in that was because Chad Stalski. That's right. You know, John Wick guy was involved with that way back in the early 90s. I was like, holy shit, that makes sense. But that, I don't, I, I've never even seen True Vengeance on DVD. So just imagine, there's so much, I mean, there's a lot of classic, like, Cynthia Rothrock movies that never, never came to Blu-ray or, uh, or hard to find on DVD now. There's a lot of good shit out there, man. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like, I'm t perfectly fine with my DVD of uh, Excessive Force because it's better than nothing. It's, it's better than nothing. Well, while I'm sitting in chat, I got a couple of more minutes. While I'm sitting chatting with you badasses, what, mo what action movies out there would you like to see get the Blu-ray treatment that are not on Blu-ray? Let me know. I'm trying to think of some other other ones besides true vengeance <laughs> you know i don't think i still don't think we have an official release of true lies on blu-ray i don't think that's on blu-ray yet like an official not a third party but yeah if you guys could think of any Black Mask? I don't know if that's on Blu-ray. You think it would be on Blu-ray? Because that was um, I forgot the company that released that movie. Yes, thank you. Good choice, Dark Gable. Excellent choice. Yes, I had to buy this full screen, not even widescreen. I had to buy this full screen digitally on Amazon Prime. <laughs> That's how bad. 
<laughs> this doesn't make any sense. I had to buy this digitally on, on Amazon Prime. Yeah, China O'Brien movies. Yeah. Like a lot of like, thankfully for us fans, a lot of Cynthia Rothrock's Hong Kong movies are getting the Blu-ray treatment now. Thanks to 88 Films and Eureka, right? But a lot of her American movies, I don't see those on Blu-ray, man. Uh, I think Perfect Weapon's on Blu-ray. I, I think I have it. I believe that's on Blu-ray. That's another underrated movie. Maybe I should maybe I should review that in the future. Yes, I did hear Drive is coming on 4K, even though I just bought the goddamn <laughs> MVD Blu-ray. MVD Rewind Blu-ray. I just bought that like not too long ago. <laughs> it's tempting. Because that's a kick-ass movie. It's tempting. Extreme Prejudice. I don't think I don't know if I've seen that one. It sounds pretty cool. Let's see. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis wanted to do more serious roles and non-horror s- stuff in the '90s and early 2000s. She has come around though. Plus, she's at the age where she can retire. Oh yeah, for sure. What's going on, Rudy O? Rudiato, Rudiato. <laughs> yeah, we're talking uh, action movies that are that are not on Blu-ray, and they need to be released on Blu-ray. Yes, yes, another one. Lone Wolf is on fire. You guys are on fire right now. Yes, King of the Kickboxers. That needs to be on Blu-ray. Yes, yeah, why not? Yeah, bring those out too, for sure. I can't even find these on DVD. <laughs> I don't even know if King King of the Kickboxers is uh, have has an official DVD release that's like remastered and everything. Uh, I yes, uh, Black Eagle was released by MVD Rewind. I believe I have that one. Van Damme versus Shokasugi, son. What's up, Raider Nation? What's going on? You asked me that last time. <laughs> you asked me that last time. Nate Dogs, thanks for the super chat, man. Badass stream, courtesy of Fat Samurai Guy. Great stream, as we show. My, it, you guys make it great hanging out with me. I appreciate that. Yes, so... If you have an all-region player, Heather, you, you can get it from Umbrella. I have the Umbrella uh, Blu-ray release of No Escape, but it's called something else. But if you have an all-region player, that's the only way you can watch it. But yeah, it needs an... It, I mean, come on. Scream Factory? There's so many so many Blu-ray uh, re- studio releases now that they go for the cult films. It's like, dude, come on. Where's where is no escape? That should that, there's so much up there. White Tiger, that's another one. Blood Moon, yes. Yes. Oh, sweet, Heather. Nice, nice. Check it out for yourself, Fat Possum. It's free. Watch watch them on Tubi. It's free. (laughs) Just got to, you know, remember, you got to view it in the right perspective of viewing it. You know, they're small budgeted independent movies. If you're okay with that, you should be fine. Yes, see, this is what I was talking about earlier. If you're curious about my review of the Commando, uh, Rudy Otto, just rewind, the rewind, just go back to the earlier I reviewed it, and uh, it was disappointing. You know what? Blood and Bone, I think it is on Blu-ray. I think. I'm not positive on that, though. Yeah, Lady Dragon. I couldn't even find Lady Dragon 1 and 2 on Amazon Prime. I couldn't even find them to, to like, rent. I couldn't even find them on YouTube. 
<laughs> the 13 Steps of Maki with Sister Street Fighter. I think Narc, that shit, that's not on Blu-ray, Narc. Here, let me bring up. Let me do this. Let me bring up Amazon here. Actually, I'll I'll do I'll do this one better. I'll bring up Blu-ray.com. Blu-ray.com is a great site, guys. And what's cool about that, it shows all regions. All regions for movies. And the cool thing about Blu-ray.com, you can when you when you log in and make your own like account, it's free. Um you can keep track of what you owe. I mean, own. <laughs> Which is very helpful, man. All right. Let me go look up NARC. And then I'll look up uh, Blood and Bone here. All right. It looks like we have a winner for NARC. Wait, hold on. Let me make sure. What? NARC is not on Blu-ray? That's weird. Well, at least in America, it's not. It says, it said there is a Blu-ray, but there's nothing there. So it says you can buy it on eBay. So maybe it went out of print. Maybe that, that unfortunately happens sometimes. Uh, what was the other one? Blood and Bone, right? Let's see if that comes up. Uh, a whole bunch of Blu-rays came out for Blood and Bone, so we you're in luck. In different regions, too, so that's good. Oh, there's Blood and Bone and Black Dynamite 2-pack. There you go. <laughs> uh, Taking One Cash is on Blu-ray. I'm pretty sure I have that one. I want to see USA up all night, all seasons on Blu-ray. <laughs> Benny the Jet may be Miguel's father at Cobra Kai. Oh, my God. Yeah, I can reach out to him. I can try to get an interview with him. I did, I did run into him twice. It's pretty funny. Raw Deal? It should be on Blu-ray. Let me try. Let me look. I want to revisit that one. Raw Deal's got to be on Blu-ray. Come on. Wait a minute. No way. Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm getting another Raw Deal coming up. What? No. Let me try all countries and see what happens. <laughs> Come on. All right. If you have all region, if you have an all region Blu-ray player, a whole bunch of raw deals pop up. That's weird though. Not here in the States. That doesn't make any sense. I could have sworn raw deals on Blu-ray. That's weird. Force five. Let me let me look at that one. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave it on all countries. That way. All right. So we got a lot of them. A lot of force fives. Again. This this looks like what what country is this? This might be like French or something. It did pop up. So, <laughs> but you might need an all region Blu-ray player. <laughs> How can Raw Deal not be on Blu-ray? That's bizarre. <clears throat> Neenan, what's up, brother? Neenan has sent me a message. Oh, okay. So NARC is on Blu-ray. 
It's just that you need an all-region player to watch it. So, guys, if you guys want that narc. Thank you, Neenan. Raw deal. That's so weird. <laughs> it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. How can that not be on Blu-ray? That's so weird. We'll see if we have time tomorrow. And uh, we'll see if we have time tomorrow. And Because uh, I, have a, I have a stream tomorrow night. If you guys are 6, six o'clock. PM Pacific. If you guys are horror and metal music fans, you might want to show up for that one. I got some cool guests. We're going to talk about a cool Kickstarter for a cool movie. Oh, so it is on Blu-ray. That's weird why it doesn't come up on uh, Blu-ray.com. Well, I found it on Blu-ray.com, but like uh, I'm thinking more of the States. Like For some reason, it doesn't show up here in America. It's weird. Unless there's something wrong with the website. There could be something wrong with Blu-ray.com. But if we have time, what I meant to say is but we, if we have time, me and Lady Fabblood will <laughs> review the book of Boba Fett if we have time tomorrow. <laughs> I'm surprised. As long as the stream's been on, I'm very surprised. Not one person this whole time has said anything about Book of Boba Fett or asked me about Book of, Bo- Book of Boba Fett. That's very impressive. Wow, look at that. Interesting. So stay tuned. Uh, we, 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 we'll have to do some kind of video. We'll try to sneak it in tomorrow if we can. <laughs> Raw deal. Yeah, I want to revisit Raw Deal. All right. I guess this is good enough for today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with Samurai Guy. And we'll do more of these. I'll still do my traditional movie dojo episodes, but we'll do more live because I want to uh, hang out with you guys. I want to know what you guys think about the movies I'm talking about. Uh, Whether we agree to disagree, it's still fun hanging out. Uh, Oh, Brian Trash. What's going on, brother? But just really quick recap for those of you that are just popping in. (laughs) Uh, clean, I gave a solid B. Slow burn, but worth the ride. Uh, the finale's badass. Solid B. Very entertaining. I enjoyed it. The Commando is a very, <laughs> very underwhelming and disappointing. A not, yet again, another Blue Balls Michael J. White movie. Uh, it gets a C, and that's me being generous. It gets a C. And, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of a nostalgia and a little bit of kick-ass badassity to go back to 1993 and uh, ex- excess of force, baby. Samurai guy gave it an A-, minus, man. Like, this was just a blast watching. And it's what action movies in the 90s were all about, man. So that's my quick recap. Thank you so much, guys, for hanging out. With the badass, that's right. You guys are badasses yourselves. That's right. And and Anthrax, I am never watching Santa (laughs) Sangre. Because you keep asking. I will never, ever watch this, ever. As long as I'm alive. I will (laughs) never. This must be your, this must be your most favorite movie of all time. In the history of all cinema. This must be your favorite movie ever made. Because you keep asking me this <laughs> every single time. <laughs> and now I'm refusing to watch it. And I'm not going to do it now. No, fuck it. <laughs> Y'all know I'm goofing around. We have fun here. All right, guys. Take care. I'll see you guys on the next one. You guys are awesome. Keep watching movies, badass action movies. And not Santa Sangre. Fuck that movie. (laughs) Take care, guys. Oh, I love you. I love you. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next one.